Hey everyone, welcome to Off Tempo and Pitch, a podcast that focuses on the Utaite community and its related activities. I'm your host, Matthew, aka Matthew Sepia Days. I want to thank all of our listeners for uh, joining me on the show. It is a bit of an experiment, and I'm sure it will be a bit of an adventure too, but um, I'm glad to partake in this adventure with all of you. Now, as some of you know, I love organizing choruses, so it should come as to no surprise that choruses are the theme of the first episode of Off Tempo and Pitch. For this very special episode, I've invited a very special guest. He is a longtime chorus director as well as fellow lyricist and vocalist. Tom, welcome to the show. All right, that's my cue. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And so, all right, when I invited you to be a guest on the show, I did ask if there was a particular topic you wanted to focus on, and without skipping a beat, choruses were what came up. And so, tell me, what is it about choruses that gets you excited, and why do we choose to suffer? Well, it came up to me because I wanted to talk to you about something that we both have experiences with, so we could like bounce back and forth between um, both of our experiences. And then, I don't know, the reason why I do choruses is... Uh, the funny answer would be to say I'm a masochist, but I, I guess I just really like the end result. It's so satisfying watching something come together and pouring your heart into something and then, you know, seeing the end result and, and creating that with a bunch of people that I probably would have never met if it wasn't for this shared hobby. I think that's very special. That is very relatable. It is a bit of a muscle process, but, you know, seeing it come together, is, it, it, it is magical if I may use that cliche. You did mention that you wanted to walk through the process of you know, running a course. So why, why don't you do that? Walk us through the process of one of your typical courses from recruitment to completion. Right. So for me, it depends on whether it's a, a chorus for a group that I run that's like already together or a group project that hasn't been casted yet. Typically for my... My usual group uh, is Nine Mermaids. We, we have the group casted. So right now it's just a matter of picking a song, writing the lyrics for it, scripting it all, uh, getting someone to record harmony guides, or I do it myself, or we uh, commission someone. It, it uh, depends on the song. And then, yeah, I just send out the script with everything lined up for all of the vocalists to use. Everyone sends in their lines into a, a, a line dump. And uh, we get a mixer involved who mixes everyone together. And it's just not, not really like a marathon, but, you know, where you, like, pass on the stick to one another. That kind. Uh, and it just goes back and forth between, um, between staff members. In terms of new groups and when it's a group that hasn't been cast before, let's see. I'll, I'll think of a song that I really want to work on, either because I want to hear them in an English version, because I, I also do English covers. Um, Either that or I, I pick a song that I really like to sing or that I would like uh, one of my friends to sing. That's also a, a big uh, motivation for me. I'll, I'll hear a song and I'm like, oh, God, I, I'd love to hear this in uh, Marina's voice or, you know, something like that. And yeah, I'll, I'll pick a song, write the lyrics and ask a couple of people that I know would be good for the, for the parts. Or I'll post a casting call, get people involved through auditions or recommendations by other members. And yeah, it's just a matter of doing that same same routine, getting a script out with vocal guides, uh, waiting for everyone's lines to come trickling in, and getting getting a getting a mixer involved in that. That's it's funny you mentioned the uh, the casting call. That's always it's always fun. Yeah. Oh, that's a process. My goodness, I I really like your format of uh, changing your cast members on every. Uh, every group that you do. You do have like a couple returning people, but I like that you you keep introducing uh, new singers as well and like expanding your your horizon of vocalists that you work with. I think that's really cool. It's, you know, I, I totally agree with what you said earlier about finding the, the song, right? The right song. I think that makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And the other component is the right people. Yeah. That's funny because I recently just tweeted out like, yeah, I complain about mixing a lot, but if you have the right song and the right people, it doesn't matter. And I, I also think that if you get the right people, the mixing process will be a lot less painful. Like, I, I really do believe in that. If you, I, I can tell when people are used to working in choruses and when they're used to singing solo, because there's a different approach that vocalists use. 
especially when it comes to like idol music. It's so slick and tight that you can't really afford to go. I, I like to call it going Beyonce. <laughs> you can't really you can't really afford to be Beyonce in Destiny's Child in this sort of uh, chorus setup because you want to really blend together and you can't play off of one another's performances or recordings because everyone just records in their own bedroom or their own like setup. Uh, so it's very important to approach your vocal recording in a certain way. And if everyone does that, the mixer is going to have a swell time. No no room to be a diva, as they say. Right. So it sounds like you you do pay pretty close attention. Like when when you get lines uh, and you do care about, you know, how it's blending together. Or, um, is one person kind of going on a crazy riff, crazy ad lib kind of thing. I mix my choruses. For me, it's kind of easy if I'm directing and mixing. I listen to the lines, I have the director's vision, and I have kind of the mixer's knowledge. How, how do you balance that? How do you work with the mixer in that, in that area? Right. It depends. Uh, it changed a lot over time as well. Way, way, way back when Nine Mermaids first was born, all of the staff work was done just by Marina and myself. So we would, we would take on all the staff work and we would very uh, closely communicate with one another about uh, how all the lines were sounding and if everyone was on time with one another. And I also think that as our uh, channel and our audience started growing, so did the expectations. So naturally, I adapted and I may have over adapted a little bit and uh, raised the bar to like a really high level for myself as well. So I like to get involved in the directing beforehand as well. I will give instructions. Uh, this is also like it changes depending on the song, but sometimes the song is just so bright and cheerful that I post like little notes and reminders, like make sure to record it with a super bright smile because you can really, you can really hear the difference in a vocal performance if the if the artist is smiling or not. I'll post little notes, and then if I, if we receive the lines, I may get fe give feedback or uh, ask for a retake here and there in, in case it's needed which I think everyone is just always really good about those. So I feel I feel okay asking for, for retakes because I know the cast also wants the best possible outcome of the project. And you've kind of pre-selected the people who are of similar mind to you that you know, that that's what they want. Yeah, and that, that sort of happened, at, well, partially by chance. Like I, I wouldn't say, uh, I, I did have a pretty like set approach in mind when I first hosted the auditions for Nine Mermaids. And I wanted to make sure that the people who were auditioning actually wanted to be a part of the group. Because a lot of auditions back then for Love Life groups, auditions back then would be like, sing any Love Life song or uh, share any Love Life song you sang before. And I wanted to make sure that for the auditions for my group, you would have to get up and record something specifically for that audition. I wanted to see some effort from the people who auditioned because if you're, if you're too busy to record a 30-second audition, then surely you're too busy to join a full-time group. So that was like my, 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 my bare limit of like, I want people to at least do this. And then when we hosted auditions for, for Chica, that like the bar was even higher. That, those auditions were tough. So we, I make sure to set a certain bar for the auditions, I guess just to, to pre-select, like you said, uh, people with a similar mindset and, uh, and work ethic. That's always going to work in your favor. You're always going to have uh, more satisfying projects and, and better experiences hosting them. I feel like I'm kind of drifting away from your question, so please redirect me because my brain is all over the place. No. We want, to, we want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> you gave the marathon uh, analogy. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it kind of switches between a marathon and a relay. Yeah. But if you're going to be working with the same people for weeks and months or years on end, yeah, you, you want to vibe well together. So yeah. I totally agree with you. Right. And it's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be the case where you're like doing game nights every week and, and constantly hanging out with one another. Like there's members of groups that I'm in that are super uh, active and constantly chatting with each other. And then there's also members who just show up, do their lines, and then, you know, dive back into their, their personal lives. And that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, as long as you're working with, with uh, reliable people who, uh, who, you, who you know will get the job done, that's perfectly fine. Do you find that that's something you ever have to go out of your way with, like through your various... You know, whether through the mermaids or through your other projects where 
during those kind of quieter parts, those lulls of the collaboration, do you ever find that you have to go out of your way to keep people engaged? Personally, feel that way because I know every time when we when we come back, because we used to upload every month, like at least once a month. That's hardcore. Yeah, it was. Oh my goodness, <laughs> we can get into that. I uh, we used to upload every month. We we've had months where we uploaded like. Someone reminded me of this recently. They were like, yeah, remember that one time when you released three full-size covers? And I was like, wait, we did that? And Yeah, we did that. <laughs> I, I just forgot. It's all a blur. Uh, and now we're on a more relaxed schedule. There's still deadlines and there's still things we, we want to get done, but it's n- no longer the monthly uploading because that was just asking for a burnout at that point. So I wanted to break free from that uh, that bubble. Actually, the cast helped me do that. They were like, hey, remember when we did this for fun? And I was like, oh, God, you're right. I, I'd i forgotten. I lost sight of that for a second because if we didn't post in a month, then people were starting to ask, like, where are the mermaids? Where did they go? They've betrayed us. Like, <laughs> And that's a very small percentage of people. Like, The comments already like, al- always are super, super, super supportive. But it, it takes that one comment that's like, Mm, you were better last cover that like ugh, that really that hurts it stings <laughs> in a my cat is meowing in the background <laughs> in a, in terms of keeping people motivated what really works is work in progress updates if i know the animator has worked on something i will show the vocalists if if some of them haven't recorded yet, I'll share like, hey, look, the animator is doing this. Or I'll share like art updates or like, hey, look, the artist is working on your sprites. Make sure to get your lines in before the deadline. You know, <laughs> like it's... it's Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Yeah, but it's like in a positive way. I'm not like, hello, time's running out. You better get your lines in. I'm like, hey, look at this stuff that people are doing to create this cool project that you're also a part of. Let's all work and, and get it done, right? And then uh, if the artists are working on art and there's a mix update, I'll send them the mix update. And I'll be like, hey, this is what you're drawing for. This is what we're working on. Your art won't go to waste, right? Because there's so many times when projects are half done and they, they, they just crumble and turn into a never-ending hiatus, I guess you would say, where it's like, I kind of want to still do this, but I'm also kind of still doing other things and it's not my priority and it'll never get done. Well, people join many different pro- projects, right? And they have personal projects as well. So yeah, I really love how you pointed out that, you know, you bring the different teams together. It's not just the vocalists or the mixers or the artists or the animator. Right. It, it is one single team and kind mm. of bringing, bringing everybody together uh, really makes a big difference. You started talking about some of the stuff that you know, you you needed redirection, or you know, you wish back then you had done differently. Mm-hmm. Um, it, have you thought about kind of you know whether it's as kind of a general director or as a specific project organizer? Are there any things you've done or mistakes you've made where oh, you look back and you wish you could have done it differently, or you learned something really important from that? I think what was really important for me was when. Uh, I'm a huge perfectionist, and I set super high, uh, high expectations for myself, and my my standards are really high, so I tend to not know when to kind of relax and have fun. Mm-hmm. So it was a real like wake-up call for me when I was stressing out about, like, oh, God, we haven't uploaded in this and that much time, and people are waiting for us, and they're, they're starting to get upset, and we, we took a break. Uh, a much needed one with the mermaids. I uh, had a lot of stuff going on in my personal life and we'd been working towards this two year anniversary special that took everything out of me. It was so much work and I wasn't even staffing really, but just getting everything pieced together and and overlooking the entire project and making sure everyone was getting their stuff in. That was... Um, this was a thank you friends or? Yeah, there was a thank you friends, the, the whole um, medley that we did. And that that was that was huge. And then afterwards, we just sort of vanished. Like we were we were like the avatar. We were just gone, and uh, without any warning, we just. And I kind of expected to you know take a little break and then come back. But then as we were gone, I realized, oh my god, I didn't realize how exhausted I was. Mm-hmm. And then we had that whole talk with the cast and. Um, uh, and the mermaids actually reminded me, like, hey, remember we did this for fun? And I was like, yeah, that was 
that was really good. <laughs> why, why, why did I stop having fun? I didn't stop having fun. It was still fun. It was still, but it was also exhausting. And there was also a lot of pressure. I mostly put that on myself. So I wish that I hadn't put that much pressure on myself and um, indirectly also on the group. So we could have just had fun all the way through without it becoming um, this big pressure, pressure factor in my life. It almost becomes a chore. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's weird. It, it, wasn't, it also wasn't a chore because I loved doing it, but it just took so much out of me that now I'm at a place where I'm like, I'm happy to be working on this stuff again. And we're just taking it slow and we've communicated with our audience. That's something I wish I would have done. I wish I would have communicated more clearly and been like, hey, guys, I need a break. I'm sorry. Um, not just to the audience, but to the mermaids themselves as well. I have an issue with admitting that I've hit my my limit. I just keep going. And then once I'm like, oh, God, I need a break, I just uh, crash and burn. So that's something I wish I, I would have been more aware of, known how to handle, and communicate it more clearly. Now with Nine Mermaids, I feel like we've sorted that out. It's it's We're in a good place now. Now it's just a matter of me applying that to my own personal stuff as well, where I just like learn how to take a break and know when something is finished, not perfect. Perfect is the enemy of done or perfect yes. is the enemy of good. <laughs> Goodness, that's so true. I'm writing that down. <laughs> You're right. Yep. Write it down. It's one of my favorite quotes. I live by perfect it. Perfect is the enemy of done. That's wow. That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was some French dude philosopher who came up with that one or something like it oh well, i'm ready um, to get that tattooed on my body there you go <laughs> you know what you just said I mean, that that's pretty powerful stuff i feel like you know whether you're doing choruses or your own or solo projects or whatever or anybody in this community anyways i feel like i feel like a lot of people might struggle with this what's your advice for people who may be struggling with it or may not even know that they're struggling with it like this whole need for perfection and kind of pushing yourself forward, especially like in a hobby community, right? What, what, what are your thoughts to people out there who might be experiencing this? Oh, gosh. Well, I, I wish I was qualified to give you sound advice on this, but I'm still struggling myself. So I can only share with you what I'm doing and what hasn't been working and what, what seems to be working. Uh, yeah. Definitely the mantras of like, finish not perfect. And now uh, perfect, the enemy of done. Um, I think expectations, whether they come from ourselves or from our audience or from the community, they're pretty, pretty high within the community. I feel like uh, you and I have talked about this before. It's we, we are setting these standards for the productions that are essentially hobby projects, but we want them to be like top quality, professional, uh, freaking K-pop group budget music videos and we're creating this stuff in our bedrooms like we we have these super high expectations of every video needs to be edited with after effects and for to run after effects without you know wanting to commit uh, several felonies um you, <laughs> you need a super super powerful pc so we, we're expecting to to have all these these like programs is equipment these skills as well uh, I feel like that's something maybe we should focus on just having fun with it. If I think if we're if we and I, I speak, I say we because like I need to remind myself of this. If we just go back to having fun, like if you find yourself in a place where you're stressed, like I need to perform, I need to get hit this level of quality or this amount of output or anything, just Take a step back, take a deep breath, and remind yourself to have fun. That's like the most valuable lesson that I've learned in the community is to just have fun. Because as long as you're having fun, you're doing good. Like you're doing a good job. And then everything else, you know, huge amounts of subscribers or whatever is just like an extra, a bonus. Just as long as the projects you're working on are bringing you joy, that can be rewarding. And then you can build upon that. Time to pull a Mary Kondo on our on our course. Exactly. Yeah. Does this, <laughs> this project, project does not joy? bring me joy? Yes. <laughs> Honestly, do do like a little spring cleanup of your own mind and see what still sparks joy. You touched on a lot of a lot of topics there, right? 
I mean, there's the, <laughs> the performance aspect, there's the subscription, the subscribers. So the numbers aspect, the fina- finances. Yes. So yeah, th- that is a lot of stuff to unpack. Mm-hmm. Um, are you taking commissions? Am I taking them? Uh, I think I have a, a stray doc somewhere for translator commissions. And I, I, I did some animations here and there, but uh, animations don't spark joy for me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've decided to stop doing that for for other people because it's just I cannot hit the expectations that the community has. Yeah. Um, so I've decided to stop doing that because I it was stressing me out. So now I sometimes do videos for my own projects, and I'll occasionally offer to do a video for a friend if I know that they're okay with the level I can, you know, offer. Uh, but yeah, no animations, not for me. Um, I do um, lyric commissions still, but I've just been doing so many things that I, it's it's not something I promote actively. But I would love like for that to be my job. Honestly, writing lyrics is like my my number one thing that I really love doing. You're going to be the official uh, lyric ri- lyricist for the Ladybug dub. I would love to be. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. that'd be great. Oh yeah, I remember your uh, Ladybug cover. It's oh my goodness, it's really good. Thanks. So how did you get into Ladybug? <laughs> what, what happened there? <laughs> what happened there? I I don't know. I I um. We're talking about miraculous Ladybug, by the way, for our yeah. audience audience members who who aren't aware. Right, miraculous Ladybug is a. a uh, a cartoon that I uh, that I watch. <laughs> I um, I tend to hyper focus on certain things, and Ladybug is just one of these things. Like I, I I have ADD, so sometimes I tend to cling on to a certain franchise or something, and I just I want to know all there is to know about it, and I I will completely milk it for all of the content, and then you know I I want to know all the lore and and everything, and Miraculous is one of these things that I just. I was able to to dive into and really explore, and it's a French show originally, uh, and it it gets translated into English, and uh, uh, it got translated into Korean as well in the early stages, and then now it's so popular that it's just all over the place. Um, and they are doing a movie, and they released a song, and it was just in French, and I was waiting for the English version, and then it wasn't announced, and I knew there was gonna be one. I knew there was going to be one, obviously, because they have a great English cast, and obviously the movie's going to be released in English, so uh, they translated all the other songs before as well. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to give it a go. I love this show. I love this franchise, and I want to translate this this song and uh, uh, not only do it in English, but also in my native language. So I did it in Dutch as well. And nice. I was joined by my my wonderful best friend, Denise, who sang all of Ladybug's parts and that was oh that was something i still get comments today asking if it's the official version and i'm like ah thank you for the compliment <laughs> <laughs> <wish>. it is not <laughs> if i only wish it could be if only it could be yeah oh if only my goodness I, there's people who have been tweeting it at like the the um the writers and stuff like hey look at this and like this should be in the movie and i'm like <laughs> i wish hit me up please <laughs> I just realized we've we've moved very far away from choruses. Very, <laughs> so, yeah. That was another passion project. <laughs> hey, if that's what gets your blood going, then why not, right? What advice do you have for organizers who are struggling to get their projects out the door or are even just thinking about getting started? Oh, okay. So beginning organizers. I think, first of all, make sure that you have a very clear image of what you want to do. This is like, I'm now thinking of this from the perspective of someone like, say, if I were to get approached by an organizer, hey, do you want to be in my project? My first question would be, what's it going to be? And if the project host is going to be like, "Ah, I don't know, I was just thinking of, you know, doing this little thingy and then maybe do that and um, just do like, I don't really know. I'm just still figuring it out. Like, make sure to figure out what you want to do first. And then if you figure out your what, figure out your how. How are you going to do it? Like if you want to do a cover of a song that has five people in it originally, do you want to do it with five people or do you want to do a solo? Do you want to do it with 10 people? Do you want to do it with 12 people? Here's a tip. If you're starting out, don't do it with many people. Don't. Start small. Let's talk in in love life terminology. I feel like that's what most people would know me for. And then uh, they know your love life stuff as well, probably. 
I, I hope so. I hope. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like if you want to start doing a group, because it, it looks really glamorous and it's a lot of fun, but make sure you know what you're getting yourself into uh, and mm, start small. So maybe start with a, the, a BB song or something and just get three vocalists, be one of them yourself if you want to be, and uh, get something out there. Get something out there that's that represents what you want to do. And then use that, that smaller project, as a pitch for your next one. So if you want to start pitching to bigger groups or be like, hey, I want to host the 20 people chorus, you're going to have to convince 20 or 19, depending on if you're joining, people to join your project and to believe in what you're doing. And the easiest way to do that is by showing them, hey, I'm capable. I can do this. Uh, or getting friends who will, uh, you know, back you up either way, regardless of your uh, previous experiences and what you've already put out there. That's also a, a great way to, to do that. Just do it with friends. So a firm plan and a track record. I, th I think that's a good way to, to like approach it professionally and then in, in like friendly terms just get a bunch of friends and just 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 work on it have fun together because i also feel like a lot of people think that you have to now reach out to all these big people and these big channels uh, otherwise your cover is not gonna do well i disagree with that i think that's not true i think you can just work on it with with people who enjoy what they're doing and just just make something great and then you know work your work your way up get more experience and, you know, watch yourself thrive as a brand new content creator and have fun because that's like the most important thing. If you're doing it to get big, get a lot of subscribers and, and like be like, yeah, I'm going to be the next big thing. <laughs> you need to, that's fine if that's your motivation, but your first and firm, foremost motivation should be to have fun because if that's your main goal, you're always going to do a good job. That's, that's very true. Did, did you have any like, like certain approaches to when you first started uh, hosting choruses? Gosh, I didn't start doing choruses until like, what, three years after I first started my channel. It was three years of, of solos and, you know, personal projects. And it was always it was always about having fun. So the first first thing was always choose the song that I wanted to do. If, if, if you want to beat the algorithm and grow your channel, then you got to hop on the bandwagon. But that's a different story. You got to cover every shonen opening that comes out. As they come out. Yeah. Be, <laughs> As be they like come super out, yeah. quick about it too. For me, it, it was about doing something that would provide kind of the satisfaction of creating something. And so, you know, I picked the songs that I liked and built kind of my own portfolio. Uh, eventually someone invited me to one of their courses. So it, it was a love life course. And I think as you make your own work in the community as you get, you know, hopefully get invited into some collaborations. If you're lucky, you make connections, right? My first chorus, it was, you know, that I hosted, it was just invitations, invitations, invitations. I asked my friends, right? People I've worked with before. I got advice from my friends on, did they have any recommendations? And I kept it simple. It was just a color coded still. It wasn't even color coded actually. Now that I think about it, it was literally a still. <laughs> and you couldn't tell who was singing what lines, but it was fun. Like we made something that I, I feel like even three years later, I'm still proud of it. I mean, could it have been better? Yeah, for sure. But I'm proud of it. It was also, it wasn't my dream project. So I've, I've seen a thread about this on Twitter about like game development. You know, don't make your first project out of the gate, your dream project. You know, there's exceptions to, to every rule, but Mm -hmm. I'm just imagining like there there were some projects that I've done on my channel where, yeah, they, they would probably rank up there in terms of things that were most meaningful to me or, you know, they were kind of a dream project in a sense. If I had done those first, man, <laughs> it, it would have gone terribly or it would not have been as good as I dreamed of. And right. that, that can be pretty rough, right? It's, it's as you've said, it's expectations. Yeah. Um, and when you set the expectations really high right in the beginning... Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of set yourself up for a potential for a potential crash. Wow, that's something I never really thought of before. Of like not starting out with your biggest thing because if you work on your your skills and your experience first, then you can do your dream project more justice. Your dream project's not going away. Oh, no, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and like I was, I was saying earlier, like if you if you like if you want to be successful, you have to be the first. I want to like touch on that a little more. Uh, don't worry too much about being the first. Uh, if it's strictly algorithms, like you said, then yes, it's something you have to keep in mind and doing like the popular songs and being quick about that can really help building your channel. But 
uh, I feel like there's a, a touchy subject as well because wanting to be the first and then not being the first or like wanting to do something but then knowing someone else is doing it as well, if that starts taking over your your mind and if that's like, like we this song came out like Aqua just dropped a new song, we have to do it, we have to be fast, do it now. Like that's not like if you're doing it with that intention – no one's going to have as much fun as they would have had if you were to just say, hey, this is a cool song. Let's work on it sometime. Yeah. And maybe that's sustainable if you're doing solo work and you're commissioning all of your staff to be like, mm, this is a deadline. And like, if that's if that's what gives you joy, right, then go for it. Everybody has different motivations. But if it's a group project and you're kind of aiming for that kind of pace, that's really tough. That is really tough, yeah. I mean, I, I frequently will will try to be the first you know, if I really love a song and I see it, I'm like, okay, I, I want to do it. it. It just came out yesterday, but I'm getting started and doing it now. Yeah, yeah, I feel that 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 competitive side is like that. Like I have that too, for sure. But but then you also have to temper it with reality. You're working with, you know, in my case, often five, seven, ten other people. They have their own lives. They may share some degree of love for the project, but they may not have the same degree of love for the project. For sure. And then also like the the amount of, of enjoyment that people may experience from your project also depends on on the host, I feel like. Like how 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 are you uh providing for them? Are you making it are you making their job easy for them to do? Are you making it fun for them to be a part of your project? Or, you know. That reminds me of a um I mean I've mixed for projects before, like other people's projects. And, you know, as a mixer. You can you can share the roles, right? Timing, tuning, mixing, mastering. Yeah. So I've been in projects where I've I've shared those roles, and mm-hmm. you know, every staff member is kind of working at their current level. They're working to improve. Like I've had the experience where multiple times now, where the time and the tune was not done the way I would have wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. Not to say that I did I'm doing it right, but it's just not the way I would have wanted to do it, right? Yeah, the way you prefer. That can be frustrating for me, and it's no one's fault. But I think. It's it's always made better when the host senses that frustration and kind of re-injects some excitement into things. I agree with you. The host has such a uh, important role to play uh, for all for all the cast members and staff involved. Yeah, and also to make them want to want to return, right? Because if you're a terrible host, then no one's going to want to work with you again. <laughs> uh, I've had people uh, approach me and ask me like, "Hey, um, where do you find reliable cast members?" And I'm like. It's not like I'm on some secret website. Like all the reliable people decided to not audition on this one website. They all go to a secret one, but I'll let you in on it. Castingcall.club. Go there. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> like, yeah, but like like a secret casting call where where everyone's reliable and no one misses a deadline. And I'm like, it's not you you can't like everyone stuff happens to everyone. People get sick, equipment malfunctions, stuff can happen, right? It's just based on how you as a host deal with that sort of stuff. And then, of course, if you sense that someone isn't really feeling the project or uh, they can't commit to it, whether it be because of time management or because of motivation or anything, it's up to you to make sure that that is resolved in a way that is, you know, nice. So how how do you deal with that then? Like when people aren't keeping up with their the timeline or, or things like that, not communicating enough or those kinds of challenges? Hmm. I wouldn't say that I really experienced that in a way that was like not manageable. Like I've I've had people who were sick or who were feeling not very motivated and uh, or just stuff was happening in their private life where they couldn't really commit to the project. Uh, I always try to be understanding because I struggle with that myself. I like there's projects that I that I have started that are collecting dust somewhere. Uh, Blessed Messiah. <laughs> yeah, one of them. Exactly. You're you're <laughs> suffering because of me. <laughs> yeah, that's just one of them. I can them. cut that out oh. if you want. <laughs> no, please leave it in by all means. Yeah. Motivate me to keep this doing to, to keep this going. I want to finish it. But uh, yeah, no, I, I feel like I try to be understanding and I try to also plan ahead. So if you want to catch a train and you know it's going to take you 10 minutes to get there, make sure to leave 15 minutes in advance. This is something I apply to chorus hosting, not to catching trains. You will often catch me <laughs> missing my trains. But in in, uh, in in choruses, I try to plan ahead and make sure like, okay, I want this done by then. So I will schedule in time that we can spend waiting. So if someone can't meet the original deadline, usually 
there's like a sneaky little extra deadline that I've um, that I've planned in there to make sure that everything still runs smoothly. Now everybody's going to purposely be late for you. Yeah. Now, like I've I've given away my secret. Yeah. No. I will I will remind people for the original deadlines, obviously. But there's been uh, there's been cases where people miss their deadline by a day, and they they came to me and they were like, "I'm so sorry, please forgive me." And I'm like, "Don't worry about it. Like we're all human. Don't worry. You can you can miss your deadline by a day. You can miss your deadline by a week. Like I understand that life happens. Uh, if you're missing your deadline by several months, or like you you don't communicate with me over the span of months." That's going to be tricky, you know, especially with groups like Nine Mermaids, where we 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 do work together regularly. If there's no communication at all, then it's not ideal. I'll still try to work my way around and accommodate to to whatever people need. But I do have to sometimes, you know, not be a friend and just be a director and make a decision that's best for the group. Um, but I feel like that hasn't really been an issue. At all, honestly, yeah, and especially now with the more relaxed pace, like we're not doing monthly uploads. Um, we're such a tight group at this point where I'm willing to wait. If someone is sick, then we just delay our our thing. It's also just not practical if you have a permanent group to just be constantly replacing people. No, for sure. In that way, like we're we're a really close group. That is like our strongest asset, but it's also something that we sometimes have to, you know, make more room for and accommodate. Like we, uh, one of the members, her mic broke and we actually came together with the, with the cast and uh, used Patreon money to, to get her new microphone so she could stay as part of the group. Because we were like, we're not, like we, we can't afford to wait until you can afford a mic yourself because microphones can be super expensive. So let's, let's help you, you know, let's make sure that you can, can stay as part of the group and, and have your setup that you need. Have you ever needed to replace a cast member for like a non-permanent group? For a non-permanent group? Um, gee, maybe if I now were to resurrect a project that like has been in the work in progress graveyard, as I like to call it, for a while, and then someone was to say, nah, I don't really feel like it anymore, then they might leave, you know, that's perfectly fine, and then I'll replace them. But no, the way that I host courses now is I just check with people like, hey, do you want to work on this within like a short term? And usually it, it gets done. You, I mean, you probably have a pretty decent vetting process. You, you do your research into people before you you just invite them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm pretty thorough with that. I I've learned from being part of other projects that if you don't do your research and if you just cast randomly or if you're too quick to cast the the results might not be as satisfying as if you were to take your time and be picky with people and and not saying you need to like because i i feel like a lot of people when they when they want to host a group they'll look at like okay so who's big who's successful who's you know we're all starstruck in the community thinking of all the people that we look up to um but yeah look at looking into uh the quality of people's work. And then uh, what's even more important is motivation. I feel like that's really big. I'd rather work with someone who's super motivated, who doesn't have as much experience compared to someone who's very experienced, but feels like, meh, whatever, I'll do the project, I guess. Motivation is huge uh, for success in getting your projects done. I mean, it's much more likely to be successful if they, they pour love into the project as right. well. Right. And if people are excited to work on it, I'll release guides and people will jump at the opportunity to start recording. They're like, yeah, a cover, let's go. Let's work on this. Awesome. So is that one person who gets one person who gets their lines in within within two days? What? Yeah. Oh my gosh. But then that motivates people. Uh, back in the early Nine Mermaids days, we would mix everyone's vocals in as we received them. And we would share that with the cast. So we'd be like, hey, we received this and this and this person's lines, and this is what they sound like together. And so and we would send it. And then that would motivate other cast members to be like, oh my God, I want to join. And then, you know, our, our first cover, I think it was recorded within like a, like a, did everyone record within a day or within a week? We released it within a week of casting. Uh, everyone was so quick. And that was just, that really set the... The, the bar for everyone's motivation. Everyone was like really feeling it. Everyone was like, yes, let's do this. Uh, and that's the kind of energy that I look for. You talked a little bit about how you look for cast members and things like that. You mentioned the research, looking into your networks and then your network's networks. So what's your advice for people who are on the other end of it, trying to get into 
collaborations and choruses. What do you have to say to them? Uh, if you're a singer and you're trying to get into choruses, sing a lot and make sure that you've got at least some samples to show. And then if you're a staff member, well, if you're a mixer and animator and you're willing to work for free, you're set for life. <laughs> um, that's that's something. Oh, my goodness. But yeah, no, I. that's another thing that's so important is to don't undersell yourself. Make sure there's at least some sort of payment that you're getting. I feel like the time of staff members being expected to suffer for free is a thing of the past. That is something we need to leave far behind us and not look back at because so many people work themselves into a burnout and stuff like that. It's just, it's not, not good. So yeah, just, just get yourself out there. Show your craft, show, show off your skills. If you don't have any staff talent, like if you're worried like, oh, I'm a singer, but I can't mix my own stuff. So how do I get my covers out there? There's sometimes mixers who will offer their, their, uh, their skills for free when they're working on portfolio stuff. Or they'll be like, hey, I'm, I've got some time to mix something. So vocalists, if you have a project that you need me to mix, like this is, again, this is in the Utah to server, stuff like that. People will offer this sometimes. So make sure to be active in the community, in the servers, and keep your eyes wide open for any opportunities that might um, look appealing to you and that you might fit. If not, save up some money and invest in commissioning someone. If that's tricky for you, then I, I understand, but you, you'll have to like either learn how to mix yourself or wait for the right opportunity. Or just don't mix it. Or just don't mix <laughs> it. Yeah, that's that's an option as well. Yeah, but if you want to like have some samples to show like, hey, this is my covering and this is on my YouTube channel, like stuff like that, then then maybe uh, get, get, get some help from people who are more experienced or learn how to do it yourself. It's so valuable to learn staff roles and to, to practice uh, mixing, even if it's just timing or just tuning or stuff like that. And but like, hey, why don't you why don't you learn mixing yourself? You know, I'm, I'm practicing myself right now because I can't rely on other people because I don't have the budget for it. If you're if you can sing, you can you can also practice uh, mixing at least decent enough to do your own stuff for sure. Yeah, I think you become a better vocalist, too. Yes. When, when you know what goes into the mixing process and you realize what does it take to make your vocals sound good? Well, you, you got to do a good recording to begin with, right? And so when you're working with vocals, when you're working as a mixer or as a staff on vocals, then you realize, oh, this is the work I could have avoided if I would recorded it this way. And there's there's also like uh, sometimes when I when I advise people like, hey, why don't you practice? They're like, oh, I don't have the resources. There's literal free programs out there for people to use and YouTube tutorials. So there's there's in this time... There's just no excuses but the ones we make for ourselves to not learn a new skill. Thinking back to the question about advice for people looking to get into projects, I just want to highlight something that you said is you not only do you look into your own networks, but you look into the networks of your networks, right? Right. It, it is community, right? It is about the people. And so you want to be respectful of people, even people you never imagine you might work with. Those people might know the people that you do want to, right? If, if you're purely yes. looking at it from a collab connection networking point of view. Yeah, and if I if I like get a, a message from someone asking me like, hey, do you want to be in my project? And I don't know them very well. One of the first things I'll do is I'll go to their social media and I'll see followers you follow or followers you know. Like if someone approaches me for a project that I don't instantly get a feeling like, oh yes, I want to join this or oh, I don't think this is for me. I might ask uh, followers of theirs that I that I interact with, like if if Matthew is following someone, and that person interacts with me, I might check with Matthew, like, hey, I see you've worked with them before. Like, how was your experience? Was it good? Because time is very precious to me. I really want to make sure that I pick projects that I can work on and that'll actually, you know, uh, happen and that will bring me joy and and that are a good fit for me and that. Uh, my work ethic will align with that of the the director and the other cast members. Uh, rosters are also huge. So if I'm going to pitch a project to someone, I'll make sure to say, hey, this is a project I'm pitching to you. This is what I've, I've got in mind for you. These are the people already involved. And then that person can base on my pitch and the people already involved if they want to be a part of that. 
it, it can be pretty tough if someone pitches something to me and someone will be the be the first person who was pitched to. <laughs> yes. We understand. But it, if I find myself in that situation where I'm the first person and there's no one else involved, I, I will say, oh, thank you for the message. Please come back with more information. And I will think about it. Like if, if the project is remotely interesting, I, I will sincerely think about it, but I'm not going to commit to anything unless I know who's involved, um, which is one of the advantages of having your friends in your parties, you know, in, in your, in your collaborations, right? You have a bit of a core of people that the next person you pitch to can look at and say, oh, this is what you've done. You know, this is, this is what I might expect, things like that. Yeah, for sure. I think that's that's a that's a great way to to set up your your projects and and scout for more people. We're coming close to an hour, and so I want to broaden it a little bit. I, I feel like we've touched upon this a little bit. Um, we've talked a little bit about things from kind of a broader community perspective. Like what are things that could could be better or could be different? And we did talk about payment for staff work. Is that the main thing? Are there other things that stand out to you in terms of wow if you know, th- this is something that the community is facing. That's a big challenge that we really need to deal with. You know, if you had to think about that, what would you? What comes to mind? I'm not sure because I'm not very. I'm not comfortable playing God and being like, "Hey, this is pro- a problem that the entire community needs to work on." Because, like, chances are, I need to work on it. <laughs> but I think the biggest one that I can also relate to is just our own energies and motivations. As long as you keep yourself in check and you're like, you're doing what you love and you're doing uh, what sparks joy, I guess I'll come back to that again. And just as long as what you're doing is making you happy, then you're doing a good thing. Uh, I do think that staff recognition and staff work and payment for said work is something that we need to recognize more as an entire community, not just you tie to community, but just in general. Of course, there's passion projects, there's people willing to practice, or, uh, you know, there, I've had mixers refusing to be paid because they were just like, I want to do this project, so don't, like, uh, and, like, I, I, I've done that myself, so I'm, I'm not going to, like, force money down their throat. But if you recognize that something is out of your league because of energy, resources, or whatsoever, you must also then be able to recognize that that is a skill that people deserve to be paid for. Nowadays, I would say ask for people's rates. Um, whenever you're pitching a project, you're like, hey, I'm looking for a mixer. Please give me your samples and your rates. So then you know what they're offering you and also what they would like in return. But uh, yeah, no, uh, recognition of staff, their workload, and the payment they deserve is huge. And then also keep it positive. Keep it positive. Keep the joy. Yeah. Respect your staff. Respect your staff. Respect your staff. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I've been in the same boat where I've if it's a passion project or if it's something I just really want to do, I was like, yeah, I'll do it for free. It's fine. But if if it's something I don't love, well, something else is going to have to make it worth my time, right? Yeah, that's totally fair. Do you have any final words for, for our listeners? Gee, uh, thanks for sticking with us <laughs> through this mess of a conversation. I feel like I've spiraled into so many different side topics and stuff like that. My brain is just, it's all over the place. Don't worry. I'll fix it in the mix. (laughs) (laughs) You'll fix it in post. (laughs) Great. Yeah, please make me sound really good. (laughs) Oh, my God. Fix it in post. That's another tattoo I'll never get. <laughs> oh, only only the editor is allowed to say that, by the way. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah, for sure. Uh, oh, goodness. Um, yeah, what else do I want to say? Just thank you. Thank you, Matthew, for having me, for, for, for taking the time to provide the community with yet another source of uh, hopefully entertaining and uh, informative content. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Thank you for joining me today. Um, this is our first, I think this is our first time like in an actual call together, even though we've kind of talked and worked with each other for, it must be years now. <laughs> yeah, it, it really must have been. Huh. It's definitely my pleasure. It's been a joy. Thank you to all of our listeners as well. This was definitely fun for me. I hope it was fun for you. Uh, there will be more to come. So stay posted. Be sure to follow the Twitter, Off Tempo and Pitch is the name of the podcast. I will see you next time.